Hey there, welcome back. Well, today we're having a look at it first from Sonoff. This is their outdoor pan camera 2K. Now to be totally transparent, Sonoff did send me this camera free of charge, but this is not a sponsored video and they have no control over what I'm about to say. Looking at the specifications on this camera, it runs off five volts, two amps as a USB-A plug. Uh, it's got a lens aperture of f1.6 with a 2K resolution. Uh, rotation of the panning is 180 degrees. Camera lens angle 108 degrees. We've got TF card storage of up to 128 gigs. It uses Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz for connection and size is 61 by 91 by 161 millimeters. So having a look at this camera, it's quite a different sort of a design. Um, the way that it actually pans is that this is the mounting and it's effectively got a motor that pivots the whole camera back and forth in a panning motion. On the underside of the camera here, we've got our speaker, we've got our SD card slot and reset button. On the back of the camera, all we've got is this USB cable. Um, effectively, it's about two meters long and we have a QR code for scanning, for setting the camera up. And then on the front of the camera, we have the lens itself in the center here. Uh, we have our small microphone over there. If I bring it closer, you probably see the little hole there. Um, this whole section around here is the, um, is the actual LEDs for creating a light and then it has the IR uh, LEDs inside of the black area over here. Now the way that this mounts, there are a number of mounts that you can actually 3D print with this. It comes with a small little plastic mount but I actually went and 3D printed this mount this morning and this is designed for mounting it on a fence so effectively it just fits onto there and that's the way that it works. So interesting, really good idea that they've offered this option of 3D printed mounts. They've got three different options available at the moment and it does come with one standard mounting bracket as well. So there are three 3D printed mounts that you can choose from. This is the fence mount that I showed you earlier. Then we have this which is a clip on adapter. Not quite sure what that's for. And then we have one that can be used to mount this under the eaves. Mounting is super simple. As you can see, this little plastic disc, I've just gone and used two of the screws, but you could use all three. And then you'd literally just take the camera, place it over the little bracket, twist it, and it's mounted. When it starts tracking movement, you can see it just turns either one way or the other way. Just make sure you've got enough of the cable free so that it doesn't pull too tight. Pairing it to the Ewe Link app was really easy. I just selected add device and scan. I then scanned the QR code on the back of the camera. It then pops up this which tells you basically the user manual if you need to access it. I just click next to go add the device. Next again. Next you have to press the little pin inside of the reset button for five seconds just to put the device into pairing mode. Once you've heard the beep, you then press the next button, check to see that the Wi-Fi indicator is flashing too short and along, press yes. Now make sure that you are connected to the 2.4 gigahertz. It'll do a scan, then select your 2.4 gigahertz network. Once you've added your password, it connects the Wi-Fi. So inside of the app, we can change the screen access like that. So we can go full screen. We can then select over here to have our pan. So if we pan from this side, that was our rotation limit on the one side. If we pan now across all the way, um, you'll see that it looks to me as if we're actually getting even more than 180 degree pan. It seems to go slightly past that 180 degree mark. So for a 2K camera, um, I think this image is pretty good actually. As you can see, we've got pretty smooth movement there of the cars moving past the house there. So having a look at our settings over here, uh, motion detection, we've got human detection turning on. Let's do mo moving objects as well. Uh, detection zone, it's currently the full area over there. So you could scroll down and minimize your zone area there. 
to select that if you wanted to you can adjust the sensitivity i've got it on medium at the moment am i allowing it to push notifications back to my phone um, cloud storage i'm not using local recording you can see i'm recording to an sd card over here and i'm just allowing it to record events not full-time recording so when you first put your sd card in you would just want to format the sd card with the night vision we can select either just to have the light coming on or we can go with smart light vision so in order to connect this to home assistant we've got the onviv so we scroll down here we go to more settings and then we go to onviv all right and then what we do over here is we say we put in a password a b c d hopefully you put in something more hopefully you select something better than what i've done and now you can turn on your rtsp stream over here and all you do then is copy the rtsp stream you don't have to worry about formatting yourself it gives you that full stream over there now we open up home assistant settings devices and services add integration generic camera and we paste our streaming source url in over there and submit so now we have our stream within home assistant we can full screen that so for 2k it's a reasonably good image um, you can see we're perhaps losing one or two frames here and there uh, but overall pretty good Testing. Hello, hello. We're testing the audio here on the Sonoff outdoor camera. So in summary, one thing that I did find was that it does need a good Wi-Fi signal. When I put it on the far side of my house, it was struggling to connect. Other than that, if you're looking for a 2K camera, which is cost effective and offers on viv support, as well as 180 degree panning, then this is something you might want to consider. The other thing I do really like about this camera, I like the way Sonoff has gone out there and created those 3D print files so that you can create your own mounts for custom installations. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.